Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at Unit 6, Section 7, which is about how we calculate the delta H of a reaction from bond enthalpy data. Now in the last video, in the last couple of videos, we learned how to calculate delta H experimentally using Q equals MC delta T, doing a stoichiometry calculation, and then dividing kilojoules by moles. Well in this one, we're going to look at how we can actually uh, determine that delta H using some uh, data that we can get very easily, very readily just online or in a textbook. Now this is the equation that we're going to use to do that. The delta H of a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpies of all the bonds broken in a reaction minus the sum of the enthalpies of all the bonds that are formed in a reaction. Now, how do we do this? Well, let's try a very common reaction. Here we have methane, and one mole of methane is being reacted with two moles of oxygen gas to produce one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Now, in order to, to do this problem, to calculate delta H using this methodology, we have to have the structures. We have to understand that the bond structures and the molecular geometries of these molecules. So this goes all the way back to unit two when we drew these Lewis electron dot diagrams. So if you remember that, this is going to be very useful for this problem. Now, we're being given a list of data here. These are the bond enthalpies for all the chemical bonds that are participating in this reaction. So using this data, we can calculate delta H. Now we'll start with the CH4 here. We can draw the Lewis electron dot diagram for methane. If you've forgotten how to do that, then go back to unit two and you can see how to, how to draw this structure. In the structure, you can see that we have four of these carbon-hydrogen single bonds. And each carbon-hydrogen single bond has an enthalpy of 413 kilojoules per mole. So if we multiply that out, 413 times four, that gets us a total of 1,652 kilojoules for those bonds right there. Now how about the O2? Well, notice I have two of those, so I'm gonna go ahead and just draw two of those. And we have oxygen-oxygen double bonds, and those have a bond enthalpy of 495 kilojoules per mole. So since we have two of those, I'm gonna to have to multiply that value by two. And so I get 990 kilojoules for that part of the problem. Next, I have the carbon dioxide. Hopefully you'll remember that the Lewis electron dot diagram for carbon dioxide looks something like this. And we have uh, two of these carbon-oxygen double bonds. And those have a bond enthalpy of 799 kilojoules per mole. So since we have two of those, I'm gonna multiply it by two, and I get 1,598 kilojoules. Next we have water, but notice we have two water molecules, so I'm going to draw two water molecules here. And you'll notice that we have oxygen-hydrogen single bonds. That's all we have here, but we have four of them. So we're going to have to multiply the four by its bond enthalpy, which is 467 kilojoules per mole. So when I multiply that out, I get 1,868 kilojoules. Now, with that done, all we have to do is take the sum of the bonds that are broken minus the sum of the bonds that are formed. Now the bonds that are broken are the ones on the left side of this equation. So that would be all these on the reactant side. So when I add those together, the 1652 plus the 990, I get that the bonds broken are 2,642 kilojoules. Now if I do the same thing on the right side, that's my enthalpy for the bonds formed. So add those together, I get 3,466 kilojoules. So just take the left side minus the right side. Bonds broken minus bonds formed. And when I subtract that out, I find that the delta H for this reaction is about negative 824 kilojoules. And that makes sense because this is an exothermic value. Negative delta H is exothermic. And this is a combustion reaction. Pretty much all combustion reactions are going to be exothermic. So this is a, a value that makes sense. 
So that's how you use the bond enthalpies to calculate delta H of a reaction. Let's try another example. I want you to notice that this one's a little bit different though. It says use the reaction and the bond enthalpy data below to calculate the hydrogen-hydrogen bond enthalpy. So a little bit different strategy here. We're given the overall delta H and we have to, I suppose, work backwards and find out what the hydrogen-hydrogen single bond enthalpy is. We don't know what that is according to the problem. Well, we're going to do this the same way. We'll start with the N2H4, the hydrazine there. And so we have, looks like we have two types of bonds here. We have a nitrogen-nitrogen single bond. And so that is 297 kilojoules per mole. We also have four of these nitrogen-hydrogen single bonds. And those are 460 kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to multiply that number by four since I have four bonds, and that's 1,840 kilojoules. Now on the product side, I have nitrogen gas, N2. When you draw that out, you'll find that it is a triple bond. And the triple bond has a very high bond enthalpy, which you would expect. Triple bonds would have a very, you know, a lot of, a lot of energy in there. So we have 950 kilojoules per mole, a lot of energy released when that bond is formed. And it takes a lot of energy uh, to break it as well. So 950, only one of those bonds. Now the H2, we, uh, we do have two of those molecules, but we don't know what that is. We're trying to solve for that. So we can call that value X or N, but either way, we have two of those. So I'll just call it 2N in this case. Now remember the equation. We take the sum of the bonds broken, so that's 2,137 kilojoules minus the bonds formed. So that's 950 plus 2N in this case. And bonds broken minus bonds formed equal delta H. Now this time, the problem tells us what the delta H is. It's right here, 317 kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to plug that in right here. And then bonds broken, that's 2137 minus the bonds form. That's 950 plus 2n. Now be very careful when you solve here. Remember to be careful with those signs. You don't want to, to mess the signs up and get the wrong answer. So when I distribute this negative sign across everything inside the parentheses, I get 317 equals 2137 minus 950 minus 2n. And so when I you know, do the subtraction and now bring this over to the other side, I get that 2n equals 870. So divide both sides by 2, and I find that the n, or the, the value for the hydrogen-hydrogen single bond enthalpy, is 435 kilojoules per mole, which is very close to the actual literature value for that bond enthalpy. I hope this video has helped you to learn how to calculate delta H using bond enthalpies. If you've learned something, please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment down below. It really does help the algorithm. I do appreciate you watching this video. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for 24 years. And in the next video, we're going to find another way to solve for delta H. I hope to see you then.